Um, so if you don't have a team, just just comment on there, and we'll we'll pair you guys up, and we'll get you guys uh, on a team. It's really fun, like Greg said, no pressure, and uh, um, we want to win too, Greg. So uh, you know we might have to knock you off there. <laughs> um, but it's 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 just you know February, you know, twenty eight days. Um, it's going to be a fun time and just a little extra incentive to, to push a little harder um, and, and just grow your business. Um, and, and when you're on a team with, with you know, four other people, um, and we'll probably have a group, right, Greg, for our, for our cup teams? Um, a chat you know, we'll, Yeah, yeah. And so, so we'll be even working closer together so you can learn off of other people, get inspired. Um, coaching is much the same as – you know, your, your accountability groups, your workout groups, right? You guys are all in a challenge group um, and you get motivation, you get inspiration, you get encouragement, support from, from everybody that's in the group. Um, coaching, treat coaching the exact same way, you know, get that support, encouragement for your business going. So um, get on a team. All right, thank you. Let's get started. Uh, I, I think... We're gonna have a lot to cover tonight. Let me share my screen. And uh, I'm gonna kick things off and then I'm gonna turn it over to Tara. Um, she's uh, one of my new coaches, which I think most of you guys know her, but if not, you'll get to meet her on the call. So, and she is an expert at Instagram especially her stories and pictures are, are fabulous. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Everyone, yes, okay, thumbs up. What I'm doing is uh, I am sharing my actual iPhone, okay, to my screen. So you guys are actually looking at my iPhone here. And I'm going to click on Instagram. And feel free to, oh, look who's on the, the, <laughs> the right on the timeline. That's yeah. Tara. See what great picture she has. I'm trying. I'm not. Oh, Brooke, you're going to have to mute up. How do I mute it? <laughs> Jeez, child, hold on. Okay. All right, guys. Oh, wait. There you go. I did that just for you. I just posted that like Thank a couple you. minutes ago. All right. <laughs> I hope you use a lot of good hashtags and that's that's great i'm working um, on it um okay so let, let me, i started focusing i mean i started my instagram account i don't know a couple of years ago or whatever but i never did anything with it okay but this year mainly starting in january i said this is the year because everybody's been saying all freaking year long last year that instagram's where it's at you know, if you want to get your coaching business going, you got to do Instagram, you know? And so I've just kind of been sticking with Facebook and message boards and stuff like that. And this year I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to crush it in Instagram. Okay. So for the past, um, I don't know, 17 days, I have been focused on Instagram. So I'm going to tell you guys how I got started since I just got started. And um, then I, I'll, you know, give you some of my tips and then I'll turn over to Tara and she can give you some of her uh, tips since she's been doing it a lot longer than I have. Okay, so first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your profile page, okay? And so what I did is I spent a lot of time studying like a lot of the top coaches and, you know, the best way to learn is to look at people who are awesome at this, right? So look at, um, you know, Melanie Mitro's page, uh, you know, her Instagram page. Look at um, Amy Silverman's. Look at um, you guys, if, you, if you're a guy, you know, um, I looked at a lot, a lot of the top coaches like Jamie Fitzpatrick's page, um, Jimmy Hayes Nelson's page, uh, you know, things like that. Um, so for mine, you know, one thing that you'll notice that a lot of the uh, – the pros do, right? When I say pros versus the amateurs, right? The pros are going to have like this, you know, see how it's uh, got the carriage return and it's got emojis in there. Um, you know, this is just, you get 150 characters, okay? And um, the Instagram app 
doesn't even allow you to hit return. So if you want to do like I have husband and father return and then something else, um, you have to do it. What I did is I typed it in a note and then I copied and pasted it. Okay. So that was my trick for doing that. Um, and added the emojis, which are cool, right? Um, and then with Instagram, you get one link, okay? So, you, you know, a lot of people will put their Facebook link, maybe they'll put a blog link if you have one, but you only get one, right? So what most of the pros do is they use something called Linktree, okay? You can see how it's spelled there, you see that? that link tree slash Greg Armfield. Um, so this, what this does is it's a free service which gives you um, multiple links, okay? So you can see when I click on it, it's easy to set up. I've got a email me button, I've got a connect with me on Facebook, which if they click that, it'll take them to Facebook. I've got a couple Google Forms, join my coaching team, join you know free fitness consultation and my website, okay? So I recommend you guys do this. Um, if you don't know Google Forms, um, you know we'll do a separate call on that or you can just YouTube it um, and, and check it out. Now, something else that you'll notice that um, I haven't really done, but you can do um, stories. You see where it says highlights? These are from Instagram stories and you can now put highlight stories on your page. And mine aren't that great, so I will show you some others that are much better than mine. You can see at the top, I've, I've only got 105 posts so far. Um, I've got 624 followers and I'm following 292. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna increase that followers, right? I mean, uh, a good account, um, and, and Instagram gives you additional uh, things that you can do when you hit certain levels. Like once you hit 10,000 followers, you can do things like swipe up to get um, uh, you know, links and your stories and stuff like that. So, you know, just to show you, it, it kind of has, um, you know, when people look at your profile, they're going to scroll and they're gonna see your pictures, right? So you want your pictures. Goodness gracious. All right, who's that, Carrie, can you mute? Yeah, uh, okay. yep, sorry. So you wanna make sure your pictures are bright and legible and uh, different than just you working out every day, right? Like if you look, if you, because when people are going to want to follow you or, or the, when they're gonna check out your profile page, they're gonna do like a, a three page scroll. And if all they see is you working out in your basement, you know, um, drinking your shake, they're not gonna wanna follow you, right? That's, that's not very interesting. So, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, mine is not that good, but let's see. Uh, go back to, uh, we'll click on Tara. Oh, these are her stories, but she'll talk about those. But you can see like her page, like that's like very interesting looking, right? I mean, she's like in a field of sunflowers and, and on the beach and, right? So, I mean, when people do this scroll, they're gonna be like, I wanna follow that girl, right? So that, that's what you want. Um, let me see, let's see. Titana, she is a great one to follow for stories, but um, you can also see her page, see how colorful it is and how bright and it's in different locations and outside. And um, one thing you can see her stories that she highlights on her profile page like she does her meal plan. So you can take your stories and she highlights from, uh, you know, 80 Day Obsession, she highlights what she's doing, right? Like throughout the day. Um, so that's, you know, one idea of, basically you can create albums, you know, of your stories and you can, she named it meal plan. And then she named this one, I don't know, big announcement. Um, and, 
basically she's talking about her challenge group, right? She's, she's recruiting for her challenge group. And this whole album of stories, oh, she's doing the swipe where you can, you know, swipe and get more information and fill out her form. But um, she does videos mixed with pictures. But then look what she's doing here. She's doing like, you know, Katie's in, right? It's like she says, I have five spots. And now she says, you know, this person's in. And she's excited, you know? So she generates a lot of excitement for her challenges. And she tells people that her spots are filling up, which is, which is a great idea. But um, oh, let's get out of there. Okay, what else? Um, let's see. Um, when you, uh, you know, obviously you want to create a good profile picture, um, you know, one that's legible when it's so small, it's kind of hard to see some of these people's profile pictures. But if it's like a big one of your face, it's better because you can see like how small it is. Um, and uh, you want to make sure it's public, right? Just with, like with Facebook, you want to make sure it's public because when you click on, um, I don't know, I don't know if I have an account that's private, but if it was private, it, all you would see, you would not see any pictures, you would not see anything. All I would say is this person is private, okay? So why would you want to follow any person that is private, you know? Um, now we might, cause we're coaches, right? And we're trying to prospect people, but, um, why would anybody want to follow you as a coach if everything is private? Um, okay. What else? Um, I set mine up. You have a choice to set yours up, uh, between a personal and a business. I chose to do a business one and it's tied to my Facebook like page. Um, the benefit there is you get to see analytics with your Facebook page. Um, so I can see like, um, uh, like I can click here and I can see, you know, who's like 31% of my followers are men and 69% are women. And I can see their age groups and I can see, you know, when they're, um, hitting my page and the locations they're from and, and that type of stuff. Um, you know, so it, it probably doesn't matter that much. If you don't have a like page, don't worry about it. I think there are advantages to also um, doing it to your personal page because I know when I post something on Instagram, it gives me the option to also post it on my like page. So if you have a personal one, you could post it on your personal Facebook page. Um, so I do that a lot. Um, if you want to post something, you just hit that plus and then it comes up with your pictures that you get to pick. Um, and one thing that I noticed is it always zooms in on the picture. Um, so be aware of that because it will chop off your pictures. Uh, you know, so you got to be aware that it does zoom in. Um, what else? Um, hashtags. Let me talk a little about hashtags. Okay. So whenever you post, right. Um, with Instagram, you want to use hashtags. Hashtags are not big on Facebook. Um, you know, they're actually kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> okay. Somebody's comment there. I was just reading. Um, uh, so I know, um, who is it? Revy who posted an article on Instagram this week on our page. And I read that and, um, I had read some other things about Instagram that Instagram allows you up to 30 hashtags. Okay. Um, and just because they allow 30 hashtags doesn't mean that you want to put 30 hashtags. The, the article recommended about five hashtags, you know, and you can see that I sprinkle them in my post, you know, and I don't always do this, but you know, this time I did, you know, day three of hashtag ADD obsession. Right. And, I, and then I talked about, I even tagged autumn and I talked about leadership and tag beach body coaching. Okay. But then in the comment section, and you will see all the top coaches do this as well. They put a list of hashtags. Okay. Now, the article that Remy said said that they're, they're not going to index the search. They're going to stop indexing the search on the commented uh, hashtags. I don't know if that's true because it still works. I tested it. Um, and, and the 
the reason that people put the hashtags in the comments is because it doesn't clutter up the body of your text, right? You don't want to see, you know, a whole bunch of hashtags in the body, right? So I just put like the really relevant ones in that are related to the picture in the body. And then I have a, a standard hashtags that I use and I copy those in the comments. And the great thing about that is you don't see that unless you expand the comments. Also a good thing is if later you want to go back and you know, like a week later when it's done, right? People are going to stop search, searching and, and finding your posts anyway through hashtags. You could go back and delete that comment, which is nice. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, that's the theory behind it. Now, these, comment, these hashtags are what represent you, right? So I have, um, you know, Team Engage, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, fit dad, leader, you know, over 40, beach body coach, motivation, you know, stuff like that. Um, and because whenever I'm talking about, and let me just show you something, um, let me go to notes. So, so what I do is I go to notes and I put my Instagram hashtags in notes. So I have two different ones. So instead of having 30 all in one, I break them up. So if I'm doing a fitness related post, I will do these hashtags. If I'm doing a coach opportunity post, I will do these hashtags, okay? And it's just easy to copy and paste from your notes into every single post, okay? And that's that'll help, you know, people who search on hashtag entrepreneur to see your post and to hopefully want to, you know, check out your profile and follow you. Um, some like here is my Instagram description. Like I said, I typed it in notes. And then if I ever want to update it, I just, you know, go into my note and update it. I also have Instagram messages, which are great. So I put all of my scripted messages in a note. And that way, if I want to invite somebody, if I want to welcome somebody, if I want to send a generic message to somebody, it's, they're all just right there. And, you know, each paragraph is a different message, right? So um, I could just go there, copy, paste, and, and do it. Um, so that's very handy. Um, so when, you, when coming up with hashtags, you want to find stuff that is related to you, right? So if uh, Connie, for example, you, you know, may want to target trucking. So you want to come up with some hashtags that are, are good for, for trucking. And now watch what you can do. So like if I'm in a, a comment or a post, I can just start typing a hashtag like truck. Um, and you can see how it comes up, all right? You can see trucks has two, you know, almost three million uh, maybe truck driver. Um, or, you know, and you can see that has 200,000. Um, but you can see, you can kind of, you know, pick which one you want. Truck driver's life, 22,000. Um, you know, you might want to do women's truck driver um, or truck driver fit truck driver or something like that. You know, you, know, you, you want to play with it. But, um, you know, like here's hashtag Tony Horton and you can see he has a million. Or if I do like hashtag fitness, this one is really not good because it's too generic, right? It's got 241 million posts, okay? That means that people use it all the time. So if somebody was to search on hashtag fitness, um, they would have to, you know, in order to see your post, um, you would either have to be a top view, which is very unlikely, or, you know, a top engagement, a top view post, or, um, they would have to see it immediately after you posted it. Otherwise, you know, there's 5,000 more people that are, that are going to use hashtag fitness and your post is immediately going to scroll down to number 5,000 and people aren't going to scroll that far to see it. Okay. So that's why people say it's better to use um, more specific, like, um, you know, fitness girl, um, you know, or something more specific that, doesn't get, you know, fitness mom, maybe, um, stuff that, you know, probably has, you know, a few thousand to maybe a few hundred thousand, 
um, fitness coach has a million, you know, so <clears throat> just keep that in mind. You just don't want to make them too generic, but yet you still want something that people might search on. Okay. Um, I see people use fit fam a lot. Uh, let's see what that one is. Uh, 80 million. So, you know, that one's not the best either, but but yeah, I mean, you, what I recommend is look, looking at coaches, you know, looking at a bunch of coaches, top coaches, look at what they're using. Um, and, you know, if you look at 10, 10 different coaches that you follow, that you admire, um, look at their tags that they're using and then, you know, uh, use that to help you select your tags, okay? Uh, let's see what else, um, breaking up, I already talked about breaking up the hashtags. Um, let me, let me show you something else. Um, let me bring over another window here. I, I know, you guys see that? Okay. I prefer using, uh, I hate typing on my phone. Okay, I know girls, you love typing on your phone and your little finger, your little thumbs move like a thousand miles an hour and you can type so fast. I hate that. I can't, my, my thumbs are like as big as like three of your fingers. So, you know, I always have trouble uh, typing. So it is much easier for me to use a computer, okay? So I found, uh, I have a Mac. There is a, a program called Flume, which is um, basically... Instagram for it's an app that that runs on my Mac and it does everything you know that that uh, you know the, the phone does and it's great now maybe it's not quite as good for scrolling I think the phone is better for scrolling and liking but when it comes to messaging okay um, I would much rather come in here and message people and you can see that I have thousands, thousands of messages that I've been messaging people, okay? And so let me explain that. Um, once, oh, and also there's a Mac, I search, there is a, uh, an app for Windows. So if you have a crappy Windows machine, there is an app for that too, so you guys can use, uh, look, just do a Google search on Microsoft uh, or Instagram app for Microsoft or Instagram app for Windows 10, I think is what it was. So if you have Windows 10 or better, you can, you can get an Instagram app for that. Um, now, you know, unless you're getting followers, you, you know, just by using good hashtags, you're going to get a couple followers, you know, maybe a week, right? You're not going to get a huge amount of followers. Now, um, and, and, and so to build your business that way is going to be very slow, okay? I'm just going to tell you, you know, unless, you know, you're Melanie Mitro or Amy Silverman or whatever, it, it's going to be slow, right? I mean, people just aren't going to flock to you and be attracted to you most likely, um, or at least for me, it, it was that way. So for me, um, I would do a lot of searching for hashtags. Now, that's, that's the great thing is you can search for hashtags that show up in comments or show, show up in posts, and I reach out to people and I message them, right? So you could, uh, you know, search for fitness. You could search for, you know, 21 day fix. You can search for hashtag Pio. You could search for hashtag, you know, anything. And you, you can find people. And what I do is when I, I check out their post, um, I see what they're doing. I click on their profile. Um, I try to determine if they're a coach by looking at their profile and you know, this person, like she could be, you know, maybe I'll click on a couple of her pictures and uh, she's in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, and so I might message her and I'll just message her and say, yeah, hey, I see you're doing, you know, this type of workout or you're doing Pio, or you're doing P90X or whatever and just strike up a conversation and, uh, you know, ask her if she is part of a, a, a challenge group. And if not, I invite her to join my challenge group. Um, 
And so uh, let me show you something else. Okay, so you can see my spreadsheet here. So I keep track of every single person that I invite, right? And you know, whether I send them a welcome message, whether they've switched over to me, you know, whether I invited them, whether they joined, because I use the app, so I get their email address and they join. You know, what, um, some of them, like three of them, have already converted over to me as customers. So you can see, you know, since the beginning of January, I've already added. Let's see. Oh, maybe that's. Me. I've already added twelve people to my challenge group. All right, somebody's off of mute. Who's off of mute? Okay, it was Tiffany. I muted you. Okay, so why do I track everything? Um, I, well, I think it's obvious, right? If you just start messaging people and start, you know, you, you, you got to keep track of people. You got to be able to follow up with people. Hey, did I invite them to my challenge group? Did they join my challenge group? Um, you know, um, and let's say somebody is, um, you know, let's say you just search for bodybuilding or let's say you search for CrossFit or let's say you search for Zumba or running or whatever. You, you may not want to just, uh, you know, if you have a a free fitness group that's open to everybody, great, you can invite them to that. But you may wanna just you know, strike up a conversation with them, put down their name into a spreadsheet, and then when you run your next free clean eating group or your free whatever group, then go back to that list and invite everybody that you have met and created a conversation with. And by you, and, and, and I can tell you what I would start by doing is, you know, let's say, um, you know, let's say I, I clicked on one of her posts. I don't want to click on these videos because then they'll start playing. But, um, and they're like all videos. But let's say I clicked on her post. What I would start by doing is I would comment um, on her picture, right? And I would say, hey, what workout are you doing? Um, you know, or whatever, you know, hey, you know, her kid, your kid is so cute, you know, um, what, what's the workout that you're doing today or whatever, you know, something like that. And then what she's going to do is she's going to respond to my comment and then I'm going to message her, right? So then it's not weird that I'm just messaging her out of the blue, right? So, um, so anyway, I think my phone turned off. Okay, so you can see, you know, how this compares, the app compares to the phone, which is, you know, almost identical. So if you guys are interested in the app, it's called Flume for the Mac and something else for Windows. One last tool, and then I'm going to turn it over to Tara. Um, this right here, okay, this is called Follow Adder. Okay, so you guys, most of you probably have heard of Instagress that um, closed down, but Instagress was a way that you could um, automatically um, do things with, with Instagram, like follow people, um, like like pictures, like comments, like, you know, all this stuff. So what I did is I searched for the next best thing since Instagram is now gone, or Instagress is gone, and follow adder came up. I also have a, um, I looked up, there was a discount code for it. Basically, it was $39 for six months. So they have an app that runs on your, on your computer. It runs on Mac or Windows or whatever you have. And uh, I can tell you that I've been using this for one day and I've already added about 30 new followers, okay? So 30 followers a day, you can do the math. In six months, I'm gonna have a lot of followers. Um, and uh, you can see, basically, I could, um, you know, I could target basically like Tony Horton. So I'm targeting Tony Horton's followers, Sean T's followers, 
Um, and what it does is it goes out, you know, I can search for hashtags. Um, let's see, I can search for, I can search for photos or popular pictures or locations. If I wanted to target people in the UK, I could do that. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's great. Um, you know, if you guys want to learn more about it, there's YouTube videos on it. They have a, a great website with training videos. Um, but you know, I set it up to follow people and it does it in such a way, you know, so basically see it has delay. So it, it doesn't want you to get in trouble with Instagram. So if there's a delay of four to eight minutes per follow follower. So this just runs all day long, every day on my computer. And it does a maximum of 100 a day because I don't want to go into Instagram jail. Okay. I don't want to get, uh, you know, suspended or whatever. So that's the goal. And, um, you know, I, I've just started it, just started playing around with a couple lists. Obviously I need to refine it and stuff like that. But, um, one thing that, you know, it, you know, once you start following people, let's say it does a hundred a day, it also has the ability to automatically unfollow. So if somebody, if I start following one of Tony Horton's followers and they don't follow me back in three days, it automatically unfollows them. Okay. Um, also one thing, if you're one of my followers, you might've gotten a thank you direct message from me today because I set up a automatic thank you message for anybody that starts to follow me. I send them a thank you message and basically, you know, I ask them what workout their program they're doing and I tell them about my link bio that they could fill out my link bio. Uh, if they want to join my team or, or, you know, need help or support, um, you know, so it's got a lot of things like that. You can, there's so much functionality, like photo likes and comments, and you can search comments and comment on comments and, you know, tons of stuff like that. I just want to let you know, it's out there 39 bucks for six months, which is a freaking deal. <laughs> so if you guys want the code, I'm happy to give you the code. Um, so that's it for my part. Does anybody have any questions before I turn it over to Tara? Okay. I will stop share. And Tara, go ahead. Okay. I've never shared my screen before, so I'm going to try this out. Um, let me close this. Hey everyone, by the way, if you have questions along the way, you can either like put them in the chat or you can just take yourself off mute. That's totally fine. Um, share screen. All right. Can you guys see this? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> okay, so I made a little slideshow so you guys can take some notes along the way. Um, I can share my phone screen too if that helps out, but I thought this might be a little bit easier for you to actually, you know, take the notes and remember them later. All right, so to start off with Instagram, you're like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? Well, Greg had mentioned you can set your Instagram to a business profile. That's what I did. Um, I set it to a coaching profile. You'll see that there are a few different options you can choose from. Um, but making it to a business profile as opposed to private, you're going to attract more followers. More people are going to be more inclined to follow you that way. Um, and you can also link it to your Facebook. So if you want to share to both, then that makes it just so much easier and it's going to save a lot of your time so that you can share it to both at the same time. Um, you also want to set a profile picture, you know, that you look confident and happy in because if people go to your profile and they see, you know, a picture of your dog or a picture of something that's not you, they're going to be like, okay, uh, I don't know why I'm following this person. So make sure you choose a picture that's actually you and you look happy uh, and confident. Um, no, sorry. And make sure you write the bio. I know Greg went over a lot of this stuff, so I'm kind of repeating, but go through and make a bio that's specifically tailored to you. So as he showed in mine, I think I can bring it up again. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so put things in here that people can relate to. So these are all the things that I love. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a veteran, so 
more veterans will follow my page and more likely to want to reach out to me. Um, Tara, we can't see that. I think you're just sharing this one app. Oh, you can't see my screen? No, we just see the PowerPoint or the Google Doc. Whatever. Oh, man, thought that worked. Okay, sorry then, it sounds stupid. Um, but anyway, make sure you do a bio that's specifically ta tailored to you. So put things that people can relate to in there. Um, okay, so sorry, I feel weird because I can't see you guys while I'm talking right now. <laughs> We're still here. Okay. And where did I go? Can you guys still see my slides or no? Okay, there it is. Yes, we can. Okay. Cool. All right. So, my tongue crazy first. Oh, okay. Sorry. Brain fart. Share your story in your posts. So, a lot of people that don't use social media very often are going to be afraid to do this, but really, truly use your posts to talk about, you know, your story, where you're coming from, so that people can relate to that because you're going to attract people to what they can connect to. So if you're real in your stories and you talk about, you know, your struggles, what happened, things that you got through, all of that, people can relate to that. So it just makes it that much easier. Um, switch up your photos. So don't do the same picture every day. No one wants to see a picture of your face exactly the same way every day. It's boring. You're going to look at the profile and be like, I don't want to follow this person. Um, so, of course, do close-up pictures, do the mid-ground, the distance photos, just change it up a little bit so that it makes the profile interesting to look at. Um, what I do is use the same filter for all of my pictures. So that's kind of important because you'll see if you use a bunch of different filters and you view the profile, it looks kind of mismatched. No nothing really goes together. So when you use the same filter, even if you, you know, tone it down a little bit or change the brightness or whatever, it's still gonna look in unison when you look at the full profile together. Um, think about when you're scrolling through your Instagram and what you wanna see. Think about the pictures that you stop on and you're like, oh, that's cool, I wanna read about that. That's what people wanna see. That's what you should be posting. So if you would think that you wouldn't stop and look at your post and read it, then you should probably change it. <laughs> Um, so tur turn your post into an invite. This is what I do a lot with a lot of my posts, not every single one, but as much as you can, you know, make your post relatable, tell about, talk about your story, talk about something that happened that day and turn it into, um, an example of how to invite. So what I did on the one today was, um, I talked about getting out of my comfort zone, doing this video for you guys. And then I said, but you need to step out of your comfort zone. Um, you should try it. And I, I tied that into my challenge groups and I tied that into how the link in my bio can take them to start making those changes. So just taking your story and then turning it into an invite um, is super important because people will read that and then it'll make them want to go back to your profile. Um, and then look at the link. And when I say the link, I'm talking about the link tree that Greg was talking about before, just so you guys aren't confused. Um, oh, hashtags and emojis are your friends. They are. Greg talked about this too, um, but I'll touch a little bit more. Um, so for my hashtags, I use very specific hashtags to myself. Um, I'm a fur mom. I use hashtag fur mom a lot. Uh, I use hashtag marine veteran. Um, you can check out any of my posts and look at my hashtag examples. Um, just make it something that people can click on and relate to you. And that's how you're going to find people that can relate to you and want to join you. Um, try posting at least once a day, but not more than five, I would say, because I would say a little more than five times a day is, is a little too much, um, especially if you're going to post them you shouldn't post them super close to each other because no one wants to scroll down their newsfeed and see your post, you know, within minutes of each other. It's just, it's overwhelming to look at. So I would avoid doing that. Um, but you want to at least post once a day because then people are going to see you every day and they're going to be more inclined to go to your page and to follow you and to watch, 
you know, your story, your journey. Um, and it makes them more interested. If you stop posting for a while, then people are kind of going to forget about you. They might unfollow you. Um, so you, you don't want to do that. So here's an example of one of my posts. Um, I chose this one because I, I made it relatable to, you know, my followers. It's about my challenge group, um, but it's specifically calling out to procrastinators because I'm a procrastinator and I understand people that push things off. Um, so I tied that into my group um, and I made it relatable to others. So, and then I use the hashtags in the comments um, like we talked about before. All right, so Instagram stories. It's totally different from the posts, of course. Um, instead of using all of your pictures and posting them all on your profile, you can use your stories for that. So I kind of use mine like a documentary of my day almost. Like, I will wake up and, you know, show the day, I'll show my workouts, you know, the food I'm eating, show that I'm, I'm living a healthy lifestyle, that I'm happy, um, and, you know, make it interesting to look at. So when I share, like, my supplements or something, if I'm drinking Energize or whatever, um, you know, don't just, like, show, like, the label of the container, like, actually show, like, oh, it's this, like, yellow all-natural drink. Um, use hashtags to your advantage in that. You can, um, when you make a post, you can actually go in there and customize it so that you can use a hashtag. Um, use all, like all of the options. So when you go into your stories, you'll see that there are a number of options. You can do just a regular picture. There's uh, the boomerang, super zoom video. Use all of those. Don't make it the same thing every time. If you just do picture after picture, it's not as interesting. Um, so try and switch it up and keep people, you know, wanting to watch your stories all the way through. Because um, if not, they can just X out of it and stop watching. Um, I personally take workout videos on my phone before. So like while I'm working out, um, you know, I'll set a timer on my phone and I'll work, I'll take videos of myself working out so that I can add them to my stories later so that I can give people, you know, a few clips of my workouts. Um, and I tie that into also inviting and putting that in my story. So, um, I'll put the video and then I'll put, you know, like here to help. Um, I'll use hashtags of like maybe the program or, you know, put little things in there like, you know, about 80 day obsession, about the sliders, how I love them. I did that today. Um, just something that people are, you know, curious about and it makes them more interested. Um, and then that makes the conversation easier to start with them because they, you know, maybe have saw your story and want to try it themselves. Um, oh, I put click the smiley face and text options. So, okay. So when you go and create a story, so say you take a picture, um, there will be the option up in the top right corner. This is kind of what I was talking about with hashtags. So there's a smiley face up there. Um, it gives you all of these options. You can add your location. I add my location to everything because then that allows all of the people that are in the area around you to, to see that, to see that post. And um, it's just, it, it widens your audience like a lot. Um, you know, put the hashtags in there, put the day in there. You can do polls in there. Um, so, you know, if you want to put a poll, like, I don't know, ask a question and put a yes or no or whatever you want in there. Um, just make it more interesting, tailor it to you and what you think your audience would want to see. Just make it more fun. Um, and then there's the text options, of course, so where you can, um, you know, write your own text in there or whatever, uh, just so that people aren't viewing a video or a picture with, like, nothing in it because it just makes it less interesting to look at and watch. Um, also use videos to do invites. So along with all of workout videos, things that I post on my stories, I also like to get on there and personally invite people to my groups. Um, you know, just put it out there. Like if you're looking to make a change, if you're looking to better yourself, um, I'll also do it with coaching too. So if you're looking to get out of your comfort zone, if you're looking to help others make money off of it, whatever the case, however you want to word it, you can put that on there 
and use it as an invite to coaching or to your groups. And you can use a hashtag of maybe your group name, um, or you can put how the link is in the bio of your profile for them to go and fill that out. Um, the swipe option Greg was talking about earlier, I think it's only for if you have over 10,000 users. It's, it's a good amount because I tried doing it a while ago and uh, yeah, that doesn't work. Um, you need like so many followers to do that. Okay, he touched on this a lot too, the link tree and Google Forms, but um, I'll go over this too. So, so what I do is for Google Forms, you can create applications under there. So if you go to if you go to your Google Drive and you go to Google Forms, you can create um, pretty much like a little survey is what it is. Um, and I put a little introduction in there and explain it all to them. And then they can fill it out and, and answer the questions based off of, you know, what I put and what they, how they feel about it. Um, so I created that first and then I created a Linktree account that Greg was talking about. You can customize it and make it look nice. Um, I don't know if I can share mine with you. You said that I, my screen wasn't showing it. Can you see any of this? No, you have to stop, share the Google Doc, and then share your browser. Oh, good to know. I wish I knew that before. Okay. Wow, I wish I knew that before right now. That would have <laughs> made it a lot easier. Okay. Um, sorry, let me get situated. Okay, so... So I have to stop sharing every time if I want to show you something new? Or like what I did is I shared my whole desktop and that way I could just drag things in for you to see. Well, how do I do that? Sorry, I'm new at this. If you click uh, on share screen, it'll say share desktop. One of the options. Why is it not giving me the share screen option right now? Um, it should be. Are you in maybe exit full screen if you're in full screen? I think it should be all the way up top. That's weird. I had it before and now I'm not seeing it. Okay. Oh, I can share my desktop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see my desktop, my husband's background. Okay, yes. cool. <laughs> um, okay. You really have like a picture of Hawaii there or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see my Google Drive, yeah? Yes. Yay, okay. Wow, I wish I knew that before. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so here is my Google form um, for my challenge group specifically. So you can create a form just like this. And so this is my, your little explanation of the group and you can have them fill out, you know, whatever they wanna do, fitness level, whatever questions you wanna ask them that you think is important to know, pretty much. Can I make this thing go away at the top? That's annoying. Um, Sorry, this is like epic fail right now. <laughs> oh, man, okay, and here's like my coaching form. I just created this not that long ago. Um, but if you want them to maybe be interested in coaching opportunity, explain that to them. Um, and they can click on this and fill this out. And when you have responses, it'll show responses up in that, that box right there. And this is what I was saying, you can attach to your Linktree account, and then you will just take that link and post it into your Instagram bio. Oh man, this is so annoying. Okay, so yeah, right here. There you go. So that's my Linktree account. You can pretty much put whatever you want in this. So if you have a blog, if you have a website, um, I put my Facebook on here so people that follow me on Instagram and not on Facebook can find me on there. Um, just makes it a lot easier. It's super easy to get to. People just click on this and it'll open up right to the form that they can fill out. So, 
just like that. Okay. All right. Okay. So, man, I feel like I went through all of that really fast and I had a lot more to say and probably would have been better if I could share my screen like I am now the whole time, um, but it's okay. Um, so importantly, like don't, how is my battery getting low? My computer's plugged in. <laughs> Maybe. All sorts of technical difficulties. I'm, yeah, but we have to wrap up. We only have three minutes left. Does anybody okay. have any questions for Tara? Yeah, that's fine. It's the last. It's the last slide anyway. I just wanted to say, don't get don't get discouraged by the number of likes you get on a picture. It's just a like. Uh, don't let it bug you or get you down or whatever. Um, what's most important is that you're inspirational. You're motivating to other people, and that you can show them that they can do it too. That you want to help them. That you're there to help them, and that they can reach out to you. As long as you portray that, then you're going to get more people that want to come to you. Um, use the direct messaging, just like Greg showed you, just like you would with Facebook. It's the same thing. Uh, just reach out to people on there. It gives you another way to do it. Um, and then just tailor it to you. Don't copy what someone else does. You can, by all means, follow another person and see what they do, um, but make it your own taste because people are going to be able to tell if you're being fake with them. So don't do that. That's it. Awesome. Any questions, anyone? Other questions in the comments? No. Greg's telling you your battery is about to die. I have a question for you, um, Tara. When you um, so when you have people follow you, are you supposed to just follow them right back, or should you go ahead and look at their profile? And and then decide from there. Yeah, that's what I would do um, is check out their profile first because I, I tend to get, you know, some followers that are just these fake pages or you can tell when you when you look at their profile if it's someone that's worth following. Or not. If it's someone that you could think you could help out and be a potential client, um, absolutely follow them back. Mm -hmm. reach out to them. Um, but if it's someone that's, you know, not going to be worth your time, then I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your time on them. Okay. I, I got a quick question. Uh, hashtags. Is it yes. is it a good idea to have a, a unique hashtag that is just yours? Is there any benefits to that or? Well, it, it depends. And it's kind of hard to answer. If if people know that that's your hashtag, they can search on it, right? Like I do hashtag team engage, you know, and, and the only people that would search it would probably be us, right? Our coaches, our, our customers, you know. And I think that situation's fine, but if it's something like really, really bizarre that no one would ever search on. Well, it, here's an example. Like I was doing, um, which is kind of like my, my motto, fit, healthy, happy. You know, hashtag fit, healthy, happy. And fit, healthy, happy is, I don't know, 40, 50,000, right? Um, like you were saying before. Um, then I did fit, healthy, happy, BR, and it, nothing. So then I started using that. So now I have like five fit, healthy, happy, BR, but. <laughs> I mean, it's something different that you can try and then maybe people will follow you from that hashtag. I mean, it's only one hashtag. You have how many more you can use. So it doesn't really hurt you if you can fit it in there. Yeah. I don't know. I was just thinking like build, build up this hashtag with, I don't know. I, I know someone that does that. I have a friend that does that too, but I don't really know if it works or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe having one. Well, like, like I, I do a big rig fit just, you know, most people do trucking or truckers or, or this. So I did the big rig fit trying to get a little less of some of what I was getting in the trucking that was just obnoxious. All right. So that's kind of your own? Yeah. Big rig fit. But it, it, it works in with others. So when they go to start typing like a big rig, and it's going to come up in that list right. at some point. 
Right. That's that was kind of my what I was thinking. They're gonna if someone's typing in fit and healthy, maybe that that one comes up. Hey guys, we have another meeting that's gonna start. Yeah. Now, so we're gonna have to.